Here's the beginning of the machining operation for the part I call the tail and arbor of the fixture for the super duplex parts I'm working on. Just doing a face cut right here to, to establish a square face and then I'm going to prepare it for a center for the tail stock because the, the part sticking out about, oh, I don't know, 20 something inches from the chuck jaws here and I just want to use the tail stock. So I drill a hole and then I, I bring an end mill. This is the way I typically make a center is I bring an end mill in and tip it at 30 degrees with the B axis and actually mill the center in there. The, this makes sure it's running concentric to the axis of the machine. Otherwise, well, it, you could center drill it, but this is just a little bit more concentric. And I gotta remove this uh, shop made steady rest off of the steady's mount because I have to move that underneath the part and this won't clear the part here, the steady rest. I made this for a different job and it was still on the mount. Normally the hydraulic steady rest mounts on there, the SMW steady rest, but it only goes down to about 100 millimeters in diameter and sometimes I have to hold something smaller in diameter. And that's what I use this steady rest for. So I'm going to remove that and bring the mount here up underneath the part so I can get the tailstock up there. And this is the way the tailstock and this uh, steady rest move on this machine. It couples to the z-axis with this uh, hydraulic pin kind of thing and it and the z-axis drags them to position. So you can't really move that steady rest while you're turning because obviously you can't couple that to the z-axis while you're turning. You're just extending the quill of the tailstock and setting the Z0 for my program. And initially I'm going to turn the OD of this down to the size that would slide into the parts, the blanks for the three parts, as I should say. And I was over there, you know, looking at the computer and everything. I, I wasn't paying too much attention to this. It was cutting pretty nicely until it got down to a certain diameter right here and you can see if you watch carefully you can see the insert glowing red hot there and then it starts throwing this big stringer off the the tool and it gets tangled up in the chuck and it pulled the camera with the mag base and everything down into the chip pan right about now and uh, that kind of messed up the camera case a little bit so that kind of put a damper on some um, filming for a little while so I didn't get the rest of the shots of finished turning that but more or less I'm turning it down to the diameter to fit through the parts the blanks and here I've turned it around and I have it in some soft jaws in the chuck and I'm facing and turning the other end of it to dimensions that I, I drew on the CAD software Threw up a pretty big burr here, so I'm just breaking it off. Here, in a little bit on the video, you're going to see where I start to mill with a 5 8 5 flute end mill on the outside of this. And uh, the thing about simulations in CAM softwares is, is it doesn't show you the amount of volume of material you're taking off. And I had some settings a little bit off on this milling cycle. And I had the, um, I didn't have, well, the first pass, the depth of cut was too deep. And it just more or less tries to bury the end mill into the side of the part right here. And it breaks it right off. And uh, I wish on cam softwares they would show you uh, on the simulation like my grinder does that shows you a volume of material being removed at this time it's being done. And that would give you an indication that, that, um, kind of thing's going to happen because it, it you don't really you could probably see it if you paid attention but I guess I wasn't paying enough attention and I had a setting off this is what it should have done right here and if you listen to the sound of this this is running at normal speed right here how smooth this is actually cutting this is a green five flute um, I think they call it a fire X end mill if I'm not mistaken 
and, and I really like these end mills, they cut really nicely. This is running, I believe, I'm going to have to remember, but I think it's around 1,000 RPM, and it's either 24 or 28 inches per minute when it's feeding on in the cut, and it's going five or six times faster than, than that in the transition where it's not cutting anything, like on those trichoidal moves. I had to turn the coolant on because you can see the amount of shavings. I was trying to do this dry so you could see what's happening, but you see all those shavings built up on the chuck? And they were getting recut by the end mill, and so I, the coolant will blow them back and away, like you see there. So I had to mill this kind of unusual shape in the OD you see there that I modeled in the, in the CAD software. Here I'm going to bore a bigger center. I drilled that hole with the drill before I did the milling so that I could bore this bigger center for the tailstock so I have much better support. Right, right here I'm just setting the offset of the tool. And here's the boring operation. So I want to get a good bearing on the, the live center. And this is another Goering drill that I'm going to drill for these pins. In the previous video I showed these uh, um, alignment pins being made and that's what's going to go in the end of this part. So this is just a, a drilling a rough hole in there. And now I'm going to check because I'm going to do some finish cutting now and I want to make sure I have good concentricity here just to be sure because this is going to be a fixture and I want it to run as true as possible. So I'm making sure I'm on the X, Y, zero for this uh, to bore the holes, well ultimately bore the holes for these pins to go in the end of this part. So I'm just showing that here. This is just milling a counter bore for the thick washers that I made. I also showed in the previous video that hold these alignment pins into this end of the fixture. So that's just a helical uh, ramp down. Put a one inch diameter hole in there. The washer's I think a 990 thousandths in diameter so it has 10 thousandths clearance. It's coming back with that 5 8 end mill again and roughing out the three quarter inch bore a little undersized for the boring head here. Just a helical interpolation again. Here's the boring head. Bore the holes for a nice fit on the um, alignment pin shanks. Just different views. It, it usually got to take about three times you run the boring head to get it out to size. I'm trying to hold a pretty close tolerance here. I want a nice fit on these pins. That's the fit I'm looking for. Then I got to come in with a back chamfer tool here next to, um, which is this tool. I ground this tool on my grinder for something else, but it, it happened to work for this. To, to uh, cut a back chamfer on those holes because the pins have a radius from the turning tool on the back side of their, well, their shoulder, and I need a chamfer to clear that on this part. So that's all this is doing. So I ran it here the first time. And I need it, I checked it with the pin. It seemed like it wasn't seating all the way down, so I need to make it just a little bit larger. That's doing it on all three holes there. So after this I have to slide the part out in the same soft jaws and put it on the tail center. And I've got to mill these slots and, and counterbore, little counterbore holes in the OD 
to clear some of the milling and drilling that I'm going to be doing on the parts. If you just have a mandrel like this and you drill through on the first set of parts, that would be fine. But then after you have a hole in there and you drill through, every drill kind of leaves a slug on the tip of it. And it, and it goes down in that hole and it causes problems with the tool on the, on the next set of parts. So what I'm doing here is, is milling some clearance. Well, this is going to be where the parts are, are uh, split apart. So there's three slots like this. And then there's um, all these little counterboards you're going to see in a second here that are where I have to drill through the part. And it, it um, like I say, it'll, it'll push a slug ahead of the drill if you already have a hole from the previous drill in there. So what I usually do is mill a bigger counterbore so that that slug has somewhere to go because otherwise the drill breaks it off and it spins against the drill and it can it can damage the drill if on the next set of points. The first set it's all right but the next set is where you got to worry about it. So that's what it's doing here. It's milling these uh, counter, counter bores to give clearance for that slug that comes off the tip of that drill. And when the parts come off the fixture you can just blow these out of the holes because the parts are actually going to be split at that point so they'll just come right off. So it has to do all these, there's, I don't know how many of these holes there is, but there's, you know, there's quite a few of them in the OD of this mandrel that line up with the holes that are going to be in the parts, the through holes, I should say. I've got an awful lot of video I've taken of this fixture. I've already finished the fixture. I'm, I'm just making, trying to make these videos to show you. Know, I've got a, I haven't had time to edit this video, and I've got quite a few video clips. So there's going to be more to come on this, and then, of course, the final parts. So that's basically this part complete. You may notice that the hydraulic steady rest is in there now because. This is kind of a little out of sequence because I, I actually machined another part of the fixture on that steady rest before I did this part on this end, this up, uh, this section of this part. So now I got to deburr the part because it's going to be sliding. The, the bores in the in the existing pieces of material turned out I had to rebore every one of those because when I I posted some pictures on Instagram about this when I um, turned the OD and milled those kind of ear things on the end of the part on the second operation and turned off the extra material that was left on the OD and drilled these three through holes the part in the bore kind of shrank in areas and expanded in other areas and, and uh, as a result, this mandrel, I want this mandrel to fit pretty close within about two thousandths uh, of an inch clearance when it goes in and it, it, um, it wouldn't go in the existing uh, parts that I already have machined. This is part of the reason I only machine 10 blanks because I, I need to sort this all out to see how it's, it's going to work. So I have to move the finished boring operation to the second operation. And like I say, I posted some pictures on Instagram showing the bores. I sprayed some bluing in there. This, I'm just showing here the the um, how this grinder works. You don't have to use a wrench to take the burr out. You can just twist the the spindle end of that thing and then twist it back, and it clamps the burr. Here's the thing I do for deburring quite a bit: is is uh, I take a piece of inch and a half wide emery and fold it over three times and stick it in the end of this it's just a rod that I've cut a slot in I just sort of expand it with a screwdriver and jam this piece of sandpaper in there and this works pretty good for uh, deburring things like I'm going to show you here uh, holes and things 
you have to hold on to that rod with a rag or you're going to burn your hand with that die grinder, but you can see how the sparks flying out there. It, it works really good for deburring like this. That, that back spot face tool kind of left a little bit of a burr. I want to get it, or back chamfer tool, I should say. I also wanted a, a bigger chamfer on the these three inside corners of this um, mandrel, and I could have milled them on, but that back chamfering tool the shank would have hit, so I, I kind of ground them on with the grinder. I'm just tapping these holes to depth on these pins. I just started the tap in the machine so I'd make sure it wouldn't break it or something. Here I'm inserting the mandrel in the well that's part I had to rebore it actually. Get it to go in. But that's all very close fitting and it, it, it slid in real nice. There's only like two thousandths clearance on that ID and those pins only have about a thousandth or a thousandth and a half clearance on the holes, so everything seemed to line up real nice. So that's the part of this this part of the fixture complete. Like I said, I got many more parts to go, so thanks for watching and please subscribe if you haven't done so already.